Hello Wayne. Debbie here. And I am starting here your song for Bewitched. Um, so uh, I would talk to you face to face in the beginning. However, if I do that, then I have to fumble around with the camera going above the piano and it's kind of awkward doing that. So I'm um, sorry that it is, is impersonal, but I'll be personal in the lesson. So, hmm, I think what we'll start off with is fingering, okay, for the right hand. And um, we have the, the intro here. Um, it's it's kind of nice, so I wasn't going to use it, but I think I will use it. Um, my camera doesn't go up as high as that, so I'm going to do it just down here. need to go over the fingering with you because I wrote it all in the chart. So you will see that fingering because it <clears throat> I don't think we need to take the time for that. So it'll all be written down in the chart. I want to start off then with the chords. So it's going over all the chords in here. Um, I thought in the A section, which is the main tune, you know, um, I'm wild again, bigger. We're just going to hold the chords out. Same thing with the intro, the sung intro. He's a fool, right? We're just going to hold the chords. And the B section, which starts on uh, Lost My Heart, But What Of It, um, that is when we're going to do something with what's called half rolls in the left hand, which I'll explain. Okay, so starting from the beginning, He's a Fool and Don't I Know It, we've got the D minor 7 which is here, D, F, A, and C. And I'll write these on a little chart for you and I'll send it to you too. Okay, D minor 7. We'll go through the whole song. For the G9, we're just going to do a G7. Well, we're going to invert it like that. So G9 is basically a dominant chord. You're going to do D, F, G, B. And then E minor 7. Right, that's the... Uh, E, G, B. And for the A7, we're going to invert that. It says A9, we're just going to do an A7. And we're going to invert that so it's going to be an E on the bottom. Okay. And that repeats again. G9, E minor. Okay. That's an A13. Um, to add the 13 to that, what that means is instead of playing the E, G, A, C sharp, which is an inversion of an A7 chord, you're going to drop your third finger down and you get an F sharp on the bottom, which is the 13th. And it's very dissonant, that's okay. Then I'm in love, D minor, G9 again, which we're doing G7. Minor, we're inverting. We're inverting. So the E is on the bottom. So it's E G A C. Okay. Just marking my chart so I know what to write when I'm making out your inversion chart. Um, like a babe in arms, D minor, G seven, D F G B. In arms. For the C major 9, I'm just doing C major 7. C, E, G, B. Okay. And then when it goes to the um, C6, all you have to do is bring your thumb down like that. You don't really even have to repeat the chord. And then this whole thing repeats again. arpeggio on that, but actually I don't think, I don't think you need to. Um, and by the way, for that A13 on Wink, that's a regular A. If you, uh, you can, that's okay. You don't have to put the 13th in if you do. But very, very dissonant, so you can either put the G or you can 
go down to the F sharp. All right. All repeated. Okay, on the G13, this is what I like to do on this. You play the um, left hand. You're just going to do the root and the seventh of the ninth. Uh, of the G, which would be G and F, okay? In the right hand, we start on the second of a G chord, which would be A, and we do two perfect fourths. So it's A, D, G. That's the voicing on that, which is so pretty. Right? So it's put me on the told you the wrong thing. I, I, I kind of like how that sounds, but I like this better. And I just I just wrote it wrong in my notes. All right, instead of starting on the A, I'm, you're going to start on the B, the third of the uh, G chord, okay? The B, and then you build two perfect fourths on that, so it would be B to E to A. That's the sound. Blink! And then you go like that. Isn't that neat? That way you get the, the third, and you get what's called the thirteenth get a nine. So it's third, thirteenth, and nine. Make a note to myself. Okay, third, thirteen, and nine. Or if it's easier for you, for you just to um, <clears throat> play B, E, and A. I always like to explain where that comes from. All right, now we are I'm Wild Again, the main part of the tune. We have uh, C major 7, C, E, G, B, I'm wild again. C sharp diminished 7 is C sharp, E, G, B flat. It's a smushed together chord. The best way to think of diminished chords is they are all notes, are four notes are three half steps apart. So we start on C sharp and then three half steps up from that is E, three half steps up from that is G, three half steps is a B flat. So I'm wild and then we go up like that. B, now we're on a D minor seven. Okay, we played that already, D, F, A, C. Here we have an E flat, diminished seven. Okay, the cool thing about this is that the top two notes of the D minor 7 are the same in the D minor 7 as they are in the E flat, diminished. So all I have to do is move these two notes up to here, right? All right. Now what I did in this chart, Wayne, is I circled the chords that uh, I'm going to be doing. Sometimes they're the substitution, sometimes they're the chords above, and sometimes they're below kind of um, switched off on that. The ones, the the chords that are below um, are more of the substitutions. They're a little fancier. I don't know. They're they're just a little different. Sometimes I chose them and sometimes I didn't. I didn't stick with the one or the other because sometimes I, I liked how one chord sounded better than the other. So, um, And you'll see that on the chart that I send back to you. Okay, whatever circled. So on simpering, whimpering, that is a C chord with the E on the bottom. It's basically an, an inversion of a C chord. C. Now, this looks complicated. E7, sharp 11, or C plus. Um, all you have to do here is bring your middle finger up to G sharp, and you're going to get that chord taken care of. Okay, it's the E7 um, sharp 11 which uh, is the same as C+, basically. They're on F major 7. Alright, we got F, A, C, and E. Here we have another diminished chord. These diminished chords are great. I know they sound kind of complicated, but there's always common tones. You always want to look at common tones between chords that are next to each other to see some similarity there. Oftentimes there is. Like right here, if we're going from F major 7 
do an F-sharp diminished 7, these two are the same. Here's an F-sharp diminished 7. F-sharp, A, C, E-flat. And on this, on B, which, I like to play the bass note. B, which, C there, I know you can't see it. And then you pop up and play the C major 7, C, E, G, B. Here's our E flat diminished seven. Okay, so E flat, ha, three half steps, three half steps, three half steps. D minor seven. All right, I like this. These are this is an unusual progression here in this song, but I like it. B flat seven. B flat D F A flat, and then A seven. Alright, now we're on page two. Okay. Um, on this, I have circled the D minor, the D minor major 7, D minor 7, G7. And this is what we're going to do there. So we have a D minor. We're just going to play D, F, A, and a D on the top. And all we have to do is move the thumb down. That's a D minor chord with a major 7th on top. Here's a D minor 7, we bring this down, again a half step, and then the G7, inverted. Look how cool that is. D minor, G minor, major 7, C minor 7, and G. All on the left hand while the right hand's holding that I. Break it up. You go. I... Like that. Then we have the A section that repeats again. I couldn't sleep and wouldn't sleep. So couldn't sleep. Here's our C sharp diminished seven. D minor seven. Here's the E flat. Slowly, that base of each uh, chord is moving up chromatically by half steps. That's the beautiful, beautiful thing here. We got the C major, C sharp, D minor, E flat diminished, C with an E on the bass, that's an inversion of the C. And then we have our E7. All we're doing is moving that middle finger up, F, F sharp. And then we're back down to C. So that's very cool. Um, I love that motion. Anytime you can find that kind of chromatic or scale-wise moving up or moving down, you, you want to do that. So, couldn't sleep. We'll go over these again. That's your regular C major 7 chord. C, E, G, B. Right? Then we have our C sharp diminished seven, just like you're doing before. Our C sharp E G B flat. D minor seven. D F A C. E flat diminished seven. E flat F sharp A C. C slash E is just an inversion of a C chord. Move your middle finger up to get that E7. And then we're on the F major 7. F A C E, F major 7. F sharp diminished, B witched. Anytime we do B witched, I do a bass note in the left hand. I don't know why, I just think that sounds kind of cool. Bewitched, and grab the chord up here. You can do it as an inversion of a C, or you can do it straight as a C major 7. It's fine, whatever you like. Uh, bothered and bewildered. E flat diminished. That's right, E flat, G flat, A, C. All right? Bothered and bewildered. G7. Alright, now we have a C7 on the C7 flat 9. Okay, a regular C7 is C, E, G, B flat. 
Okay, that's a C7. But a flat 9 means you raise the C up a half a step. So you get M, that's a C sharp. Okay, that's a C sharp, and that C sharp is the flat 9. M, which is a pretty sound. You can just do a regular C7, but that flat 9 does add a, a nice contrast. And then we have M, I, F major 7, F, A, C, E. Now these are two chord substitutions. I love these chords. It's E minor 7. So we have E, G, B, and D. Okay? But if we flat the, if we flat the 5, then we would be going to a B flat. So it would be E, G, B flat. M, I. It's a nice alteration. There's some cool alterations in this particular chart. Flat fives, uh, sharp eleven, flat nines, thirteens, and then we have an A7. And I'm just doing that inverted. Uh, the reason that I'm inverting the A7 is because, if you notice, between an E minor, 7 flat 5, and an A7, the bottom two notes are the same. Alright, now for the B section, we're going to do what's called half rolls. And I don't know if you've done those before, but um, I'm going to show you uh, how to do it. So basically we're breaking up the chord into the root, the fifth, and then the third up here. Okay, instead of playing in, in what's called closed position, which would be like that for a D minor, we go root, fifth, and then we reach up for the the third here. Okay? And that on that measure we're just gonna do we're gonna do it twice. It goes one and two, three and four. You will be doing it down here, but my camera doesn't go down that way. Okay. Um, and actually, I, I, I'm just noticing what I wrote here. So if you go, I'll do it up here. Now it goes to uh, the chord that I liked is the B minor 7 flat 5. So we do B, F, which is the flat five, and then we reach up to the third. And then we go down to the E. And I ignored the flat nine, don't worry about that. Okay, so we have the, the B seven, minor seven flat five would be the root, the, s, the flat five. Normally you just play the regular five. And then the third up there, and then we drop down to the E. I'll do it up here just so you can see it. E, B, G sharp. But you'd go down here. And then we have uh, this next part where we're going to be doing. He is cold. Okay, this is what I, I love on this. Okay, we're going to go root five root for an A minor. We're not doing the um, the upper third here, we're just going to go root 5 root. The reason is that we get this cool motion here. So where it says, he is cold, I agree. We have three different types of A minor chord. So we have the A minor, then we have the A minor with a major 7th, then we have the A minor with a regular 7th. Isn't that nice? I like that. So it would be, he is cold. continue our half rolls, which is the root, fifth, third, but again, I'm going to do it down here. Here's our G, D minor. Now here we're just going to hold the chords. We're going to hold each one of these chords. We got E minor 7, E flat, 
diminished, D minor 7, and G7. Okay, we're not going to do half rolls there. I just put fermatas on each one of those to, to show that you're holding. So E minor 7 is there. E, G, B, D. Then we have the E flat diminished. Oh, we have E flat, G flat, A, C. Everything's just moving down. Now we have the D minor 7. And then the G7. Okay, E minor 7th here. And we drop down to E flat diminished 7th. Go to the D minor 7. And the G7. Just holding them. Okay? And then we're back to the A section chords. Uh, I'd like to review the B section again with you uh, for the left hand, these half rolls. So um, we've got the, uh, it starts on lost my heart, but what of it, and we have the D minor. Again, I'm going to be doing it up here so you can see it, but you would be doing it down, to the, uh, down here. The reason being that it's getting a little little interference with the right hand. So <clears throat> generally you can start the rolls down lower in the lower octave. I just you can't see it there. So we have D minor seven. We're gonna do it twice. It's two eighth half quarter. Two eighth but what of it? Okay we have on the B minor seven flat five it's the B F D. That's the root. That's the flat fifth. And that's the upper third. And now the E, again, you'd be doing this an octave lower. Root, fifth, right? E, B, G sharp. Um, he is cold, I agree. This is when you're not going to be doing the upper third, which you normally do for half roll, because we want to get this feeling. We have the root, the fifth, and the root again for an A minor. And then the A minor. Major seventh on top. We're just moving the thumb down by half steps. Right? If you coordinate that with the right hand, you see how it works. He is cold. One, two, three. And if you want to get fancy, you could go. You could even lower that thumb one more time. See, we're just moving that thumb down. Chromatic movement. So cool in jazz. Then we did the just the D minor. G, D minor, D, A, right, root, fifth, upper third, now we're holding the chords, E minor 7, E flat, diminished 7, these two are the same, D minor 7, and G7. If you want to get fancy, you could, you could put that flat 5 in there. I don't know how comfortable you are with that, but here's a G7, right? It's, it's just inverted. D, F, G, B. Flat 5, this is the 5th, the D. So we just drop it a half a step. Like that. And it has that bite to it, which is, I think it's a beautiful sound. I'll see. And then we're back. Just like the beginning, F major 7, F sharp diminished 7, what is this, that bass note pop up for the C chord, inverted, E flat diminished, G7, I'm ending this. There's lots of ways to end it. I crossed out the D minor. Go right to the second ending. I crossed out the D minor 7. And instead I substitute F. Just regular F. Both hands. F minor 6. Both hands. So that's F, A flat, and D. When you have a 6, you just go up a whole step from the 5th. 
and then we're going to invert a C chord. So the G's on the bottom. The G's on the bottom. So we have. Uh, Minor six and G C, and what I did at the very end here is just to start on the third of a C chord and, and build two perfect forces E A D. Isn't that pretty? You can just repeat it going up. Okay, that's the third, the sixth, and the ninth. that at the very end. I love, I love that sound. All right, so that's the whole lesson. I am going to play you the whole thing, um, and I'm going to do it pretty much in tempo, and I'm, I'm going to try not to talk. I just want you to hear the final version of it. Actually, I will do it a little slower. I will do it slower, but I'm not going to talk like I'm doing right now. Uh, here we go. I don't like how I did that. I'm going to do that again. I don't usually do this this intro, so I was kind of um, not used to that particular sound. I messed up that chord. Let's do it again. Here we go. G7.
I will be sending you a scanned version back to you of the chart. It's going to have, I don't know if you can see this well, it's going to have the fingering and it's going to have the um, slash letter, meaning if it's an inversion, then I put a slash and then uh, the whatever's on, the lowest note that I'm playing on the bottom, so you know that's an inversion. And uh, I have circled the chords that I'm wanting you to play, chosen a selection of the chord that they have here when they do give you the options. And I'm also going to write out a little uh, chart of the, the chords so that you see them. I will put them, I'm not sure if you'd like me to write them in the bass clef or the treble clef. I'll send you an email and ask you about that. Okay, so Go Forth and Conquer. It's a great song, great chart. I like this chart. Um, and uh, let me know if you have any questions. Okay, bye-bye now.